Well, I know that Liverpool weren't involved in the slave trade from the very beginning, but when they did get involved, they accounted for over 50% more than Bristol, which is also renowned for its involvement in the slave trade. We're going to the International Slavery Museum and we're going to have a look around. The International Slavery Museum is on the third floor. This is the first museum to deal with transatlantic slavery. In this case we can see that it's mentioned that Liverpool was the capital of the transatlantic slave trade. It's not good that Liverpool like, was part of it, but then people don't think of Liverpool for the slave trade. Like, if you mention to someone who's not from here that you're from Liverpool, they won't say, oh, that's where the slave trade was. They'd mention the Beatles or the culture, the good things about it. This is like one of the houses that the slaves would have lived in before they became slaves. So it's like a traditional African house. Why have you got all this, these things in this room? Um, so this section of the gallery in particular focuses on traditional life in West Africa. So it's really important to remember that these African people involved in transatlantic slavery had a really rich culture and heritage before they, they became involved in this trade. So this section is really important to provide a context, particularly when you compare it to ideas that Europeans might have had of Africans as being savages and barbarians. This really goes against those sorts of ideas. We're going to go and look at what the conditions might have been like on the ship. It's horrible. In there there's a video playing and it's a man and his journey through the middle passage and it's quite horrible because you see his feet tied together in shackles and the fact that they're cutting through his skin and he's making him bleed and he's being sick and yeah. it's yeah, just... you feel like you're actually on the boat because it's dark. Yeah. This is a book about like how much slaves were sold for and you can see here some slaves were sold as low as like 73 pounds. You never expect a person to be sold for money and especially yeah. that little. It's like a life. We learnt that they changed the name of the slaves, so the plantation owners would change the name of the slaves to whatever they felt they wanted to, which was quite dehumanising. These are all street names, like Liverpool streets, and Penny Lane is a Beatles song, but Penny Lane is also probably named after James Penny, who was a captain and brought slaves in and from and traded the slaves from Liverpool. And Ale Street is a name of a slave master and is it right that our streets that people live on are named after these men that caused the horrific injuries and deaths and kidnap people from their homes? So why have we given slave masters names of streets that makes them out to be heroes when in fact they were bullies? I understand that slavery brought a lot of money to Liverpool and helped us build our buildings and our culture but how do we justify what people did in those times? It is really, it's really difficult because it's such a horrible history and when you learn how badly people were treated it can be a really difficult subject to look at. I think that's why it's even more important that we've got the Savory Museum because it's really important to remember. Well on these computers you put the headphones on and it has a list of songs that would have people would have either sang or songs that have been made about slavery. <laughs> you saw throughout the gallery how many ways they kind of lost their identity but you can't take away those ideas of culture that they've got in their heads so they use that music often to resist. Coming to a museum teaches you things that reading off the internet or being taught by someone can't really teach you and the things that you will like, learn in this museum will stick with you.